we got to get an understanding of the God we say we serve. He's bigger than we think. He looks at Abraham and Sarah. They were beyond logic of having a child. Beyond the years of childbearing. And he looks at them and says, in other words, what's too difficult for me to do? If I can create all those galaxies that you don't even know about, what's a womb that I can't put a baby in? You remember when he went to Mary, the angel went to Mary and told her that she was going to be with child and carry the Savior? Luke 137, when Mary wondered how a virgin could bear a child, the angel addressed her squarely and says, nothing will be impossible. think of that verse when you see your situation when you think about that problem in your life the angel says to us today nothing will be impossible for God the God you serve I don't care how big it is I don't care how the situation looks it looks the doctor's report it doesn't matter he says nothing will be impossible for the God that you and I serve. I'm telling you, whatever the mountain of the situation is that you're facing, whatever that challenge is that seems like it's killing you, whatever the circumstances is, you gotta look at the circumstance and say, nothing is impossible for my God, nothing. He can do anything. He creates out of nothing. He just speaks it and it is so. When I understand the kind of God that I say I serve, I move differently. I process differently. I go through problems differently. My perspectives are changed because I'm viewing my situation through the lens of the God that I know and serve. So all of a sudden, the thing that looks so big, yes, it looks big when I view it through my own carnal eyes, but when I pull out and view it through the eyes of Elohim, I realize that it's a small thing to the mighty God that I serve. Amen. Your purpose is already complete. He's already spoken it. It is so, it is done, and it is good. Our job is to step into it. But God has already gone ahead of it. He's already done it. He's already fashioned it. He's already formed it. Now you just have to align with the purpose that God has already spoken concerning your life and my life. Whatever God is going to do for you, he has already done it. You don't have to, oh God, could you fix this? I got this situation in my life. He's like, I've already done it. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord oh but I don't know if I'm gonna like it no it's plans that are good and not evil to bring you to an expected and he knows what you need I'm Elohim I make something out of nothing so Sarah I know your womb is is beyond childbearing but I'm Elohim I speak and it is so. I put seed inside your womb and it is so. So here comes Isaac. Because God said it. I think God is just after our belief. God wants us to know that he is transcendent. He's transcendent. What does that mean? Meaning he's distinct from his creation. Rather than being a part of creation, he sits above his creation. That's why heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. He puts his feet on earth, his toes, so to speak, on planet earth. Secondly, underneath transcendent, he transcends time. Who? He transcends time. If God created time, he had to precede it in order to create it. He couldn't have created something that was already created. So he created the beginning. He created time. So when you and I discuss time, we discuss it from a linear perspective. 
So we say uh, seven o'clock, three o'clock, or Monday through Sunday, or um, January through December, or hours or weeks or months. We can't fit God inside of that because he fits beyond he sees beyond the time that we construct in our minds to to weigh the the day when i go to sleep when i get up god sits above that he created time he sits outside of time god is present now and always you see you and i have yesterday and tomorrow god is always and always will be we're talking about time he transcends it so he is always and always will be he is the I am you know what that means present tense always he is right now that's why he told Moses tell them I am sent you that is in the now he's referring to himself yesterday he was now today he was now he's now and forevermore he is now he's the eternal God he doesn't fit in our cortex of time he sits out, oh, come on church, we got to understand this God. He's mighty, so he's, he's, he's the I am, not I was or I will be, but right now I am, ever present. He transcends time. So for us, we go to God with urgent prayer requests. God, I need this now. God, you got to come through now. We look at the time, we look at, well, oh, it's, it's due now, it's due now. And God says, it's a problem for you, not a problem for me. I created the time you're worried about. You're telling me I gotta do, it gotta be now, it gotta be now. No, no, I sit above it, I know when to do it. No wonder we can say in impatience and in our angst, he tells us, be still and know. I know you're worried about that and you're thinking the time is running out and you're thinking where is it going he can look at you and tell you just be still you know what that means chillax relax cease striving be still and know what that I am God I'm Elohim I created this thing Genesis 1, 2 to 3 says the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light and there was light. The earth was formless and void. Darkness was on the face of the deep. It was a waste, garbage, un uninhabitable. It was the result of Satan and his fallen angels. And the planet became a wasteland. But the Bible says Elohim began to, began to hover over the chaos, over the wasteland. And life is a, is a, was the result of the Spirit of God hovering over what looked like a mess. What does that tell us about God? It tells us that he's a restorer. He restores things. He takes what the enemy has messed up and cleans it up come on right he takes what was messed up hey come on that should be all of us and he cleans it up he makes dead things come alive he brings lights where there is dark darkness he is a restorer so what the enemy is trying to do Satan messing up things God comes in and restores it so what that tells us he makes all things new in your life and in my life that should give somebody in here hope because only Elohim can turn a mess into a miracle only Elohim can do something like that his name is Elohim Elohim and when he transcends our lives and turns what was darkness in our life to light he then wants you to reflect him Genesis 1 26 tells us then God said let us make man in our what image according to our likeness what is an image an image is a mirror the flowers were not created in God's image mm -mm. The beasts, they weren't created in God's image. The fish wasn't created in God's image. Only man was created with the capacity to mirror God, to reflect God Almighty. Everything else can validate God, glorify God, but man is the only one that was created in his image to reflect 
God Almighty. We're supposed to mirror God because he has put his image stamped on us. We are commissioned high at a higher level than any other thing created in all creation. Only mankind has been given the privilege and the honor and the capacity to mirror God Almighty. No wonder the psalmist says, what is a man that thou art mindful of us? Why would you look upon us in such love and kindness and mercy? And I don't know the reason for that all we know is that God says that you are the apple of his eye this great majestic mighty powerful God says you are the apple of his eyes that when he sees you he sees the beloved his love towards you is full running over bubbling you've heard me say it before the scripture says that his thoughts towards you outnumbers the sand on the seashore which seashore pastor nadine all of them it outnumbers that's his thoughts toward you not just once all the time that that's god's thoughts toward you all creation testifies of god's glory we the third thing is God transcends not just time, space, but he also transcends matter. He sits outside the physical components of the universe, matter. In order for God to exist outside of time, space, and matter, he must exist in another dimension that is not tied to time, space, and matter. We do not have a clue fully of what that dimension is like, but the scripture gives us a little glimpse here and there of that dimension. He fills, while he's, he sits outside of time, space, and matter, the scripture also lets us know in Jeremiah that he fills the heavens and the earth. He's not subjected to it but yet he fills the heavens and the earth. Jeremiah 23 verse 23 says that he fills the heavens and the earth. This tells us that not only is God transcendent, but he's also imminent. He's also imminent here, there, and everywhere. He is everywhere present. The theologian word for that is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He fills creation. He sits outside of it. He's in it. He's above it. He's, I mean, he's all, that's why the psalmist says, where can I go from your presence? If I fly on the wings of them, I can't hide from you. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. That is the God we serve. That's why another name for God is Jehovah Shammah. It means the Lord is there. Where? Wherever you are, he is. Where you're not, he's there too. He sends you to go ahead. He's up ahead of you waiting for you while he's walking with you to get there. Come on. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is everywhere. He is with you wherever you go. Anywhere he sends you, God has already gone ahead to prepare it for you. We have to be reprogrammed, transformed by the what? The renewing of our minds. He's Elohim yesterday today and forevermore when you're gone he's still elohim